What's up YouTube, Danny James here and today we shall be learning how to pull off this freeze frame transition technique which is a bit different from other freeze frame transitions we've covered in the past. Again, if you're new here, kindly consider subscribing because I make weekly editing tutorials, a lot of music video effects, transitions and VFX styles that can apply into your video projects. If you happen to enjoy this video, don't forget to give it a like and without further ado, let's jump right into it. I found inspiration to do this from this video by Melvoni. Yeah, so it happens right here and it comes along like that. So let me play it back again and then I'll also slow down the speed. Yeah, so we want to do something like that because there is a lot of movement happening. This frame comes in and it shakes a bit and then uh, the retroscoped version of the subject is also pulled out of the frame which makes it a bit interesting. It also happens somewhere else in this video, but in the reverse form, uh, which is really applicable. So I'm going to show you how to do this on After Effects. Don't forget and hopefully to you like learn something from this. So I picked part of this video whereby we can use. So we have the part A of our video, right here from the same video, and we have uh, part B. So we are going to transition between these two videos. Also right beside I have a reference shot so that you can see what we're trying to emulate through this transition. So first thing I want to do, I want us to rotoscope or to get a video of this which is rotoscoped. And so then, what you want to do, uh, you want to duplicate your first clip, control D, and then you want to go to this rotoscope tool, double click so that Somewhere you can go into a in layer video. panel. Again, rotoscoping is pretty much basic, but I'll show you. Just make sure you get a good selection of the subject initially and then you can follow with it frame by frame uh, however you choose to. So I won't spend much time on this, I'll make sure to forward this part. So right now we are done making a selection of this using the Roto Brush tool. So I'll come back to my selection tool right here and then can go back to our composition. Also remember af after you are done uh, doing this process you need to click on freeze. And also make sure this small uh, grey area is fully stretched to the point where you are going to. And then I'll hit on freeze making sure that it will lock. Uh, this selection to the points whereby we just identified. Yeah, so right now if you come back to our composition I'll hide the layer beneath so you can see what's happening. So we have the selection of the subject only I can only do little changes to the shift edge and maybe the feather But I think it's already cool. Now I'll enable this layer once again. Also remember to rename your layers So I'll name part A rotoscope Rotoscope and then you can also give it a color so that it's easy for us to follow along. Now we can see essentially what we want to do, we want to have the second frame coming in and then it comes a bit and then shakes. On this frame, we need to duplicate this layer, right click and then time freeze frame. And then let's give this other one another color, let's give it a yellow color. So this will mean that I will want to place this right beneath and then it needs to appear beneath this rotoscope so i'll have it come on so we'll make sure this screenshot stays right beneath and then how we'll do we'll just add some keyframes for position and rotation maybe i'll click here to get this menu then go to transform just try clicking on everything up to rotation so what you want to do you want our last position to be right here where this ends now from the initial point we want it to be upside down so it will stay upside down so it will come through a rotation so this is what we want it to do we also want it to scale from being small so it will appear like this like that and then just to add the extra sources to uh, right here we need to add motion blur and if you cannot see these options make sure to click here to toggle between switches and modes so we'll add motion blur so that you can have that sort of blur happening whenever it moves so it will 
rotate like that. So once the animation gets to this point, we need to do one extra thing. So we need to get a screenshot of this rotoscope. I'll just enable this layer only, but a rotoscope. And then I'll toggle the transparency grid so that you can have a transparent layer beneath. And then I'll go to composition. We want to export this frame, save frame as, and then choose your settings. We need a PNG. And then let's have it go to the desktop. And then just render that out. It should take a second or less. And then right here, import this file. And then just bring it down here. You can enable everything. So let's also disable the transparency grid. And then we'll need to scale it up to about 300. And then let's squeeze it to the right. Okay, so again, we'll place it above this part B so that it stays above everything. So the sequence will look like this. And then it will go on. Now we shall need to move this character or this mask. And how we'll do that, let's click on it so that we can only see this layer. Now I want us to adjust the anchor point because I want us to do a scaling. I just hit S on my keyboard and I want us to scale. But I want to change the perspective from which we scale. Just get this anchor point tool and then squeeze it around somewhere here. You can put it right beneath but I'm finding a better look from here. Go back to my selection tool, add a keyframe for scaling, go up a few frames and then scale it. Okay, so I'll enable everything so that you can see what's happening. It will come in and then it will go away. Now we don't want it to go away right immediately, so squeeze these keyframes into the middle. And I'll squeeze them a bit again. I'll also highlight on these keyframes, put them on easy ease. So the frame will come in and then it will go away. Again, to make it more realistic, add motion blur right here. And then it will go with a good zooming. Once this is over with, we need to add a little bit of shake. We saw from this reference file, there is a bit of shaking which happens and then it goes away. So I'll come to my presets and effects and look for shake. Drop it on the second clip, on the clip which is right here. And then right after a few seconds, I'll hit Control Shift D and then delete the sapphire shake from that video. So it should shake and then go on so it everything shakes and then it goes away yeah and the same principles apply when you're doing everything in the reverse form just make sure to get a rotoscope and then also remember to put your layers accordingly one on top of the other uh, this is something which can be very confusing but hopefully you'll remember and train yourself on it that's it i hope you've learned something from this video if you've enjoyed it Kindly give it a like, it will help with YouTube's algorithm so that other people with the same interest as you can see it. My name is Danny James, hope to see you in the next one. Cheers.